Oh, hey, what's happening there, YouTube? It's Brian House here for Housemade. Did you know that the sharpening industry is a $1.8 billion industry? That's right, I said billion with a B. And by 2027, it's estimated to be a $2.8 billion industry. And when I read numbers like that, I immediately think of commerce and how people are spending their money trying to make things sharp. About two months ago, a good friend of mine, Dennis Trell, some of you might know him, asked me if I'd be interested in collaborating with him on a jig that would mount to a 2x72 belt grinder that would assist people in sharpening things. Not just knives, but things. You can do lawnmower blades, you can do all kinds of things with this. And of course, I love collaboration, I love in innovation, I love all of these things. So I said yes, and in those last two months we've been developing this, testing it, and making it work. And now you can have one of these for your 2x72 belt grinder. You can buy them at housemade.us. You can mount one to your Revolution 2x72 or any other 2x72. Now if you're not familiar with the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder project, it's a big, heavy-duty, industrial machine that you can buy a kit or plans and build one yourself. If you'd like to learn more about that project, go to my website, housemade.us. But if you already have a 2x72 and you want to sharpen knives precisely, you've seen me do this by hand many times in many videos and I can achieve this, but not everybody has that muscle memory and they are looking for a more precise way to put a bevel on a knife that's very consistent and easy to achieve and is repeatable and this jig does just that. Now think about how many dull knives are all over your neighborhood. Think about all the people that you know that have dull knives. You've got a 2x72 belt grinder, and you have this jig, and you have the skills to do it. You could turn that grinder into cash by sharpening knives for your friends and neighbors and possibly get customers from it because if you're sharpening their knives, what are the chances that they're going to be buying your knives later down the road? So anyway, without further ado, Brent and I are going to be sharpening three different blades, three different characteristics. Some of them are heavily damaged. they got chips in them and other things, and you're going to watch how we do it. We're gonna step-by-step step build this jig, assemble it, put it together, put it on the Revolution, and then we're gonna turn these knives from dull, rusty blades into razor-sharp tools of creation. Let's get started. So this is what comes in the kit. You got a tooling arm, these two 5 8 inch rods of different sizes. These are the beefy, heavy braces for those. Some hardware and some uh, little bits of rubber with a sticky on it for your clamp. Now you're going to need a clamp for this. Uh, we do not provide that. Most people have one. You can buy them on Amazon. I'll provide a link for that. Um, and you also get this handy dandy instruction manual. This is a very simple device and it uh, goes together quite quickly. Uh, and remember, Dennis makes these by hand in his garage with his son. So these aren't CNC parts, but they are precise. They work really well and um, it's going to do the job just fine. So let's put this thing together. All right, so what we've discovered is it's easier to build this thing on the machine. We're going to grab our tooling arm, put it in the lower receiver of the Revolution, grab our half-inch bolt and washer, thread it through the side where the wheels are on the grinder, and then take our small brace, and these hole sizes are different, so you want to want to pay attention. This one is a 5 8 inch hole. This is a half-inch hole. The half-inch hole goes through the bolt, and then the adjustable handle gets threaded onto the bolt and it tightens everything down. So your assembly should look like that. Next, we're going to take the adjustable handle and thread it into the top side threaded hole of the small brace. The short rod then gets threaded into this hole and you can tighten that down. Next, you're going to grab the large brace, slide it over the other end of the short rod and with a bolt you're going to lock that into place. And so far this is what your assembly looks like. You got the tooling arm with the half inch bolt and the clamping handle, the short brace with the adjustable handle, the short rod that's fitted up to the long brace. And now you're going to grab the long rod, thread it into the very top of this and another bolt and lock that into place. Now you can kind of see where this is going. It's a pretty awesome setup. Now we're going to take a look at the clamping system. This is one I've got on Amazon. It was really inexpensive and I had laying around the shop. 
couple things we want to do to this is remove the thumb screws, replace them with the bolts that came with it. But also Dennis provides some rubber to cut down and line the interior of this clamp so it keeps your blade safe while you're performing the sharpening process. So let's talk a little bit about belts and how this works. Uh, we just recently upgraded our sharpening system, which concludes a misting kit and three awesome belts from VSM. We start off with a 180 grit aluminum oxide ceramic hybrid that will give you your, that'll help you set the bevel. And then a 600 grit compact grain, which is also aluminum oxide. And then we go all the way up to a 1200 grit compact grain, a similar belt. Um, and the reason we do this is because we're setting the bevel with the blue belt, and then we're refining those bevels all the way up to a uh, 1200 grit to get that precise shine that you like on those edges. You can strop however you want. I prefer a leather strop on my 2x72 or a stationary strop. All right, so let's sharpen this guy here. This is one of Brent's prototype chef knives. Um, what is this? Uh, what steel is this? S35VN. S35VN, and it's dull and it needs an edge. We're gonna take our clamp and we're gonna center it on the cutting edge and tighten it down. I'm gonna make sure it's locked into place, that it's tight. Okay, so we're gonna take the digital angle finder and we are gonna zero it out on top of the belt. We'll get it at least close. We're gonna take our knife with the clamp, rest it on the bar, set it here, and we're gonna find our angle. Now, for this knife, what do you think, Brett? Between 18 and 20 degrees? Yeah, that sounds good. Sounds good? So we wanna want between 18 and 20 degrees and it's darn near right there. Now, if we wanted to change that, we could, we can obviously modify it pretty quick by just up, pulling up and down, loosening this bolt here, and then angling it up and down. We're gonna shoot for right around 19 degrees. Let's get it close. And lock everything into place. And then double check it. 18 and a half looks pretty good. Yep, almost there, right around 19 degrees, and we're ready to start sharpening. So we're gonna turn on our VFD to about 15%, 15 to 20% in reverse. So nice and slow. Grab our knife, rest our clamp and the knife down, and we're gonna run the belt across the blade as evenly as possible. Wow, <laughs> it's actually really good. <laughs> All right, let's try it again. Start in the center of the belt, tang, move it across. Flip it over, do the other side. What we're looking for here is a burr. And you can actually see it here forming. And while I was working across the blade, I could watch it form. And it is pretty impressive at how quickly I was able to put a burr on this. Now, granted, we're at 180 grit, but look at how consistent and even that bevel is across that blade of that knife. Now, this is a seven inch long blade, so that is really impressive. I'm gonna check for a burr all the way across. If I feel any spots that don't have a burr, I'm gonna continue on. And in this case, there is a burr all the way across. We're gonna swap out our belt for a compact grain 600 grit.
Okay, so now we're up to the 600 grit and we're gonna just repeat the exact same process. The 180 grit belt, I think I had maybe a combination of four swipes on each side to achieve the burr. I think what I'm just so amazed about is the consistency in the bevel every time. Like there's just no difference from, if you're doing this by hand, you can have a tendency to wobble the blade left to right, which would um, decrease your chances in getting a very consistent burr all the way across. What this does is it holds the angle for you. There's not a lot of thought involved. And I think I like that about this. Every time I do this, I'm just feeling for the burr. I'm running my finger down and across like this, these fingers. I can feel the burr here, but I don't feel it so much in here or down this way. So I know I have more work to do. Okay, so now we've got the burr across the blade after the 600 grit belt. I'm gonna take this one off and swap it with the 1200 grit. And now I like to use a uh, leather strop and we're gonna swap out the 1200 grit for a two by 72 leather strop. You can also strop by hand, whatever you prefer. Shaving my arm. Give it a shot. <laughs> I was not convinced <laughs> that that was gonna work, but wow, this thing is, was, <laughs> it is, it is, it is, it is. I mean, literally in five minutes, that's ridiculous. So, and we were filming the process. So yeah, razor, razor sharp in like five minutes. It's a no brainer. Brian, is it time to see if it's sharp? It's time. Let's check it out. <laughs> Oof. I think it's sharp. So this knife has a convex edge. This is a machete-esque knife, a little thicker than a standard machete but we wanted to keep that convex edge. That's why we switched over to the large contact wheel here, ran that contact wheel so we could get in there. We could keep that large, that convex, if we ran on the back side instead of actually running on the wheel. And it also gave us room to get in here with this fat handle for that chopper so we weren't hitting anything. Um, we worked the grits. You saw that big chip that was back in here. You can now see that chip is no longer. We worked the grits. We went from 60 grit to get that chip out. And then we worked all the way up to 1200 grit and then stropped. So I call this a great success. How about you, Brian? It's amazing. All right, we got one more knife we wanna sharpen. The, this particular knife has a recurve in it. So there's some complex geometry. We wanna demonstrate that. It is a very thick spine. Um, it's about, I'd say, a, nine to 10 inch long recurve blade. 
So it is a little bit of a challenge and this jig will not have any trouble making this thing razor sharp. Let's get started. Don't screw it up, Brent. Now that uh, I've worked that, that chip out of this edge at 120 grit, we're gonna work up the grit progression, uh, go up to 180 just to refine that a little more, and then hit our 600, 1200, and then strop, and we'll be good to go. Okay, so there you have it. The Dennis Terrell Housemade Knife Sharpening Jig is a fantastic addition to any workshop that's making knives. If, even if you want to sharpen lawnmower blades, big knives, it just really just makes it super simple, takes all the brain work out of it, and I am really, really impressed. Nice work on this, Dennis, and thank you for collaborating with Housemade on this. You can go to our website, housemade.us, and pick one up. They're in production now. Uh, these are made by Dennis and his son in California in their garage. So this is a grassroots sharpening movement. I love it. You know how much I love that kind of stuff. One little caveat though, if your knife is say, say smaller than an inch from the spine to the cutting edge, you're going to want to run a contact wheel. We ran into a couple of small interference problems with working with small knives and that's just something to consider. But a contact wheel does get you around that. So if you work with really small knives, just get yourself a contact wheel. We sell those at housemade.us as well. Thanks again, guys, for watching. I truly appreciate you following along with all of my projects. I hope to see you in the next video. My name is Brian House, and this has been Housemade.